Hello and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Rare. Today our guests are the guardian angels and citizens on patrol. So don't go away. You don't want to miss this show here on The Pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. My guest today is Marcus Strider Dent of the Guardian Angels. Marcus, I'm going to call you just, just call you Strider, all right? Yes. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, so tell the folks again, and, and, and the Guardian Angels have been around for, for some time now, um, and, but tell us what the Guardian Angels are. The Guardian Angels is a community volunteer nonprofit mm -hmm. uh, crime watch group. Mm -hmm. And it started in 1979 in New York City by a man named Curtis Lewa, right. who was just a uh, mild-mannered McDonald's manager right. who kind of got tired of all the crime and, and, and havoc going on in his communities where mm -hmm. he worked. Mm -hmm. And that's how he came up with the Guardian Angels? Well, he came with the Guardian Angels. What he did was, you know, during that time, there was a, a, a certain area of the subways there that was really, really violent. Right. Right. And Curtis got off of work one day, grabbed three or four of his buddies and went down into the subway and, mm -hmm. and started watching you know, and seeing who was doing what and mm -hmm. watching people rob and mug and all that. So he, he kind of got involved where he would end with his with his guys and they'd pull him up. But what he did was he continued to do this every single day. Right. And as he did it, he got more and more people to come down and help him and, and work with him to participate. So, you know, what he didn't expect was that during the time that he was doing this in the subway, the subway got extremely crowded because right. everybody figured, you know what, you're going to take a subway to go somewhere. That's the best time to do it exactly. because these guys are on this platform. Exactly. And he did this and they took it from one platform to the next platform mm -hmm. and he went out and got more and more guys and and uh, he ended up going up above the subways into the communities right. and, and the apartment complexes and then the projects and uh, before you know it he had formed this grassroots street community organization that was going to do what they could against crime and before you know it the guardian angels were born and you know today we have approximately 160 chapters all over the world you know, 29 in Japan, three in South Africa, uh, Brazil, Canada, and we even have guardian angels in Hawaii. Is that right? Yeah. So, 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 uh, tell me now, how did it get to be a national organization? Well, what happened when when the guardian angels formed up in New York City? You know, pretty much Brooklyn and the Bronx right. area. Um, the community newspapers picked it up, and okay. hey, we got these guys doing this, doing, you know, doing this. You know, they're going out here fighting crime and all this, and and it became sort of like the superhero novelty type thing. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, you know, the martial art magazine started right. picking them up, right. and, and the sport magazines, and because you know during that time, the majority of guardian angels that showed up were all you know uh, martial artists and wrestlers mm -hmm. and boxers right. and organized fighters of some right. sort. So they became like this underground kind of hero type thing right. where these guys went out to help their communities. And, uh, you know, they'd get a call from another area and saying, hey, we need you to come to our city. And, mm -hmm. you know, fortunately, you know, back in the 1980s is when they originally first came to Baltimore. Right. And I was actually a part of that team that helped start the Guardian Angels back then. I stayed three years and then, of course, you know, I was, I was young and right. you get up, you got to grow up and right. get a life and all that. So right. I left the Guardian Angels. But in the meantime, the Guardian Angels just kept growing and growing and and you know everybody was calling and requesting, and we would just and we always sent somebody. Curtis is still in charge of Guardian okay. Angels, and he's still involved on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, so in 2006, you know, I got a call from Curtis saying, "Hey, we need to. We're getting a lot of requests from Baltimore. Are you interested?" Right. Right. And I said, "Well, let's get together and we'll talk about some things." And in 2006, this chapter of Baltimore was restarted. Great. Now tell us. Uh, let's clear something up, um, and I know it, and I know the answer to it. The question. But let's clear it up for our viewing audience. Some people you all used to refer to the Guardian Angels as a vigilante group. Let's clear that up and make sure people know. We got to clear that up. And and but you know, any kind of group or organization or or activity that started that's new and people don't understand, right. automatically you're going to get tagged. Right. In 1979, when Curtis C. Y. started the Guardian Angels, you know you had a bunch of you know you you had to question. Okay, what are these guys doing? Right. Uh, how are they going to do this and what gives them the right? So it's, it's a scary thing because people, people basically tend to fear what right. they don't know about. Right. And yeah, you got tagged by the police department, the mayor's office, the public officials. The only people that didn't tag you were the people in the community where you were walking around to support because the guardian angels were made up of that, of that community group. Right. But um, yeah, they were tagged as vigilantes, but realistically, 
you know, the guardian angels never really did anything to hurt anybody sure. to earn the name of vigilant, right. except for the fact that they stepped outside that box and said, you know what, we're going to police our own exactly. communities. Thank you very much. All right. So, you know, the guardian angels never carry weapons. They're not, you know, we don't carry anything that can be simulated as a weapon. You right. see the big mag lights and all that kind. Right. You never see guardian angels with that because we don't want people to look at us and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, that can be right. used as a weapon. This can be that, you know. Right. And, and, you know, the guardian angels train a lot in conflict resolution, self-defense, mm -hmm. and exactly. everything they need to basically know what not to do when they get into a situation. Exactly. So you're not going to get a bunch of guys to come out there and act as individuals to, to do something. We have our own ranking order and our sure. own structure and our sure. own training. So sure. even uh, uh, Giuliani, I think, back then, who was the, or Bloomberg, one of those two guys, the mayor back then, who had labeled the, the guardian angels as vigilantes, came back and said, hey, look, you know what, and is, is one of the biggest supporters of the guardian angels today. And I, and I know that, uh, that you all have a great working relationship with the police department here in Baltimore City. Um, so talk about what the, the mission are, of the Guardian Angels is. The, the mission of the Guardian Angels, especially now mm -hmm. in, uh, in you know, 2012, is pretty much to go into a community and help empower that community, you know, whatever way is possible by building relationships with other organizations, departments, and, and citizens. And mm -hmm. so, you know, back then in, in, in the 70s, the Guardian Angels just patrolled. Right. You know, it was just the Guardian Angels. Nobody was pretty much involved except the community. Maybe the Angels did the patrolling. Right. But now, you know, we have so much stuff going on, and the organization has evolved in more than 35 years mm -hmm. that we have come basically a 100% a community organization. So we don't just deal with just patrolling. Right. You know, now we may do the COP program. We also do the mentoring program, the bullying thing, and, and the cyber angels. So, you know, the guardian angels try, and although we're geared towards public safety, you know, we try to reach in and do whatever it is we can to help empower that community however possible. And, you know, this chapter here in Baltimore, we best serve that by building relationships with different organizations and law enforcement agencies. and and the Jack Bakers of the world, that kind of thing. And, okay. and, and it works for us. So tell me about some of the, uh, the projects and the programs that you have going on and that uh, are some upcoming projects that you have going on. Well, some of the stuff that we, we've been involved in, is, of course, is the Guardian Angel Patrols. We've, we've done a lot with the right. COP programs as well. And we have done you know, very little of the Junior Angel stuff because we're just so tied up. And we've, we've been working with the local law enforcement, which is great. Baltimore City Police really, really stepped out of the box and, and, uh, and helped support and also give the Guardian Angels the credibility right. with the public officials and the sure. citizens to say, hey, look, this is okay, we're working with them. Right. And they also, uh, you know, help provide us with some of the training that we need. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, we work with some of the missing person units to go out and help spread awareness on missing persons. We work with the homicide unit to help spread awareness on, on different crimes. So mm -hmm. we, this chapter here in Baltimore pretty much focuses on a lot of the missing persons, the victims uh, that, that have been you know, shot and killed in Baltimore. Right. And, we, and we're doing what we can to raise awareness in that. And you know, one of the projects that, that we want to work on now is to build community relationships in the communities that don't have represent, they don't have homeowners associations, sure. they don't have the police monthly sure. meetings. So one of the things that we're trying to do now is get the support we need from other organizations to help us and the police department is to go into these communities and say, hey, you know, you're, this is your district, this is how many murders you've had in the last year or a few months or weeks or whatever. We want to get the community together. We want to try to educate you on safety awareness, crime awareness, what you can do. You don't have to join the angels, you don't have to join right. the police department, but what can we do as a community to help curb this crime? Well, when I, but what if someone does uh, want your support in the community or somebody wants to even become a guardian angel, how would they do that? Well, if you want to become a guardian angel, all you got to do is contact us. And one of the things we do is we bring you in mm -hmm. and we have you meet with the guardian angels, talk to, talk to us. And I tell everybody, before you want to join this organization, learn something about it on your own. Mm -hmm. Hit the websites, hit the newspapers, read something about it. Don't join anything or anything right. about it. And then we'll, we'll bring them in and let them hang out with us for a couple of days to see what it is we do. They'll come to a training or maybe a couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. And they, they can just contact us through our telephone or our website. And we that always that respond. Number, uh, the, the, website. The, the website is uh, www dot baltimoreguardianangels.org mm -hmm. and the phone number is 410-916-2215. But you also have a Facebook page. We also have a Facebook page and mine is geared towards our chapter. You can go into me, Marcus Strider Dent, mm -hmm. and you can, you can also see when it says our Baltimore Guardian Angels. So there's two you can choose from and mm -hmm. once you hit those, the, you, I mean you see everything we've done in the past, you see what we're working for in the right. future. So I mean, thanks to the social network and there's tons of information out there and ways you can find out what the Guardian Angels actually do. Mm -hmm. 
Well, well Marcus, um, it, needless to say, I, I know about the work you're doing in Baltimore City, and I've seen uh, the results of and the partnerships that you work with. When you walked in here earlier in my, uh, this afternoon, you, you embraced a police officer who you've worked with on many occasions yeah. in Baltimore oh, City. Yeah. So we know that you all are, are, are a wonderful organization, and we hope that you continue to grow. Uh, I'm surprised that, uh, to know that you have chapters all over the United States, and uh, maybe I might want, want to join the one in Hawaii. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, so we'll me see too. about that. All right. But I want to thank you for coming on the show. But I want to also uh, let you know that anytime you've got a message to get out, that and you feel free to come back on the Pulse and talk about what I the appreciate guardians it. are doing. And uh, maybe we'll even bring a camera one night and go out on a walk with I you. I think that would be great. And, and, you know, one of the things that, that when people do come to see what we do, and we invite people all the right. time, you know, they look and they'll, they'll sit and they'll say, wow. Right. We didn't know you guys right. were like this, you right. know, and, but, you know, but we invite people to come do that. So it would be great if you could. Right. But you got a good message. You got a great program. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on the show. Thank you. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Joining me now is Jack Baker of the Southern District Citizen Patrol. Jack, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sam. So tell us uh, and tell my audience, what does the Southern District Citizen Patrol do? Uh, it, well, it's part of the Southern District Police and Community Relations Council. Okay. There are nine such councils in the city, one mm -hmm. in each district. Mm -hmm. Our job is to create cooperation and understanding between officers and citizens. Mm -hmm. Uh, we try to gather neighbors from all of the neighborhoods in the district to meet with us once a month and we present a lot of different programs to them so they can take the stuff back to their community which may help them make it safer. The biggest program we have is Citizens Own Patrol okay. and that accomplishes a lot of stuff. Everybody thinks, oh no, that can't stop crime. Well, perhaps while we're walking there, crime doesn't stop. It may move a little bit. Right. But at first, it creates community spirit among the people that show up. Okay. And, and uh, do you train your people before they go out on the streets and do citizen patrol? No. At one time, the police department trained citizens, mm -hmm. but it took uh, three hours, two different times. Mm -hmm. Nobody has time. Mm -hmm. So Bielfeld said, the hell with the training, and mm -hmm. we went out on patrol in Riverside. Okay, and when they go out on patrol, what do they do and what do they look for? The first thing we look for, of course, is anything that'll look good to a bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be lights out, it mm -hmm. could be a lot of trash. Mm -hmm. It could be simple things like where they steal the face plates off of the bottom of lamp post for their stash, sure. but it's also bad for pets and kids. Right. We write all of this kind of stuff up and whoever is appointed by that community mm -hmm. goes either online or calls 311 to get all of this stuff fixed. Mm -hmm. So we're helping the neighborhood that way. Um, sometimes the fire department actually walks with us and they help us in determining the fire hazards in our district. Okay. And they've been a great help. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose behind it. That and the fact that we have a police officer with us. Okay. That's right. probably the most important part of it because this isn't for protection. Mm -hmm. We don't need protection. Okay. It is for the citizens to interact with this officer. You know, the citizens know stuff and we want them to talk to the police, but quietly. Okay. Now, I know that there are, uh, there are a lot of Citizen, good citizen on patrol groups yes. throughout the city of Baltimore. And I know there's, like for example, Northwest Citizen on Patrol uh, has a vehicle. Do you all do all of your uh, patrolling by uh, by foot, or do you get in a car and ride around no. also? It is all foot. Most of South Baltimore is tiny streets, mm -hmm. very narrow. Right. They have walkways rather than alleys, mm -hmm. and we can't, you know, get in and out of those areas. Uh, our bike patrol. Mm -hmm. Officers can, mm -hmm. so we walk. And do you um, do you, do you do you all like? Um, there's one group that has like the the pooch patrol. People walk with their dogs. People bring out and just sure. do the exercise, walk, and everything else with you also. We we do encourage that because people have to walk their dogs. Right. So what a good way to you know handle two things at one time. Mm -hmm. And how often do you walk? Most neighborhoods walk once a month. Mm -hmm. 
they're encouraged to walk as many times as they want. Um, the only problem we may have is having an officer available every time they want to walk. Sure, sure. Now, how often do you have your council meetings? That's once a month. Okay, and at your council meetings, what do you discuss? Well, the, a major, the deputy, excuse me, captain, mm -hmm. right. and usually the ops lieutenant, they give us a crime update. What has really happened mm -hmm. in the district? And the ops lieutenant actually gives names of people they've put away okay. that we've been concerned about for years. Right. Okay. And now, so you, you really believe that the importance of having that police officer and that relationship with the police department is, is a key piece of having uh, a successful citizen of patrol? Yes, it is. All it right. is the piece. Okay. Uh, well, if somebody wanted to join your, uh, your citizen of patrol group, is there a way to get in touch with you, or is there a, a website or a phone number they can call? We have a website, or they can just talk to their community president. Mm -hmm. All of the neighborhoods are involved somewhat with us, mm -hmm. some more so than others. Give me that website if you got it's this. It's www.sdpcrc.org. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and um, since you talk about the relationship with the police department, we're going to bring on another guest and have a police officer that has worked with you all uh, come on, and, and we're going to talk about the, the importance of having the, that partnership when we come back. Great. Okay. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. Hello and welcome back to The Pulse. Joining us now is Officer Kowalczyk of the Baltimore City Police Department. So when we went on break, Jack Baker and I were talking about the importance of, of having a citizen of patrol and a relationship with the Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, let's talk about that partnership uh, a little bit. I think the, the, the partnership that the Southern District had, which is the experience that I had when I worked with Jack Baker, is mm -hmm. probably the finest model of cooperation between the police department and citizens, and it was vital towards accomplishing our mission of reducing crime. Mm -hmm. Without that interaction, there, I, I can think of about five different programs off the top of my head that we utilized where it was right. the community's involvement, their interaction with us, the information that they provided, whether it was on a COP walk or whether it was at one of our council meetings mm -hmm. or just a regular community meeting, developing that relationship, getting that information from them was key in, in reducing crime in targeted areas, in um, cleaning up areas, just getting rid of trash and, and mm -hmm. things like that, making people more invested in their community. Without that interaction, I don't think that the police department would have been as successful as it was in the Southern okay. in reducing crime. Now, 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 Jack Baker thinks a lot of you personally as a police officer, but also thinks a lot of the, uh, the relationships between the police department from the top down to uh, the foot patrol officer. Um, a lot of people sometimes have to break a barrier to gain trust in the community. How do you, how do, you do that? You do it two ways. Trust, trust is, is the fundamental thing. And uh, what I found um, when I give this speech about how we break down barriers, people don't like the police necessarily. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, my, what I've found is that that's a result of miscommunication between the police department and the citizens that it serves. Mm -hmm. So when I go into a meeting and, they, and I hear the horror stories of, well, the officer did this to me, or they said this, or this experience is what happened, and I try to justify the officer's behavior, it looks like I'm covering up for the department. Sure. Which is not what I'm trying to do. I'm really sure. trying to explain why it is we did what we did. Right. Without that trust and without the ability to communicate on a one-to-one -one level, for me to be able to look you in the eye and say, this is what we did and have you believe me, you need to have that relationship and that trust. So mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely, um, it's the cornerstone of what we do. Mm -hmm. The public places in the police department a certain level of trust. We expect you to do this. We expect you to keep us safe sure. at night. We expect you to make sure that our house isn't broken into or that we can go to our school safely. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we expect as police officers from the citizens that we serve that cooperation and that engagement. If you don't have trust as a fundamental part of that relationship, you're not going to have that engagement. Mm -hmm. Our relationship isn't going to work. You need people like Jack Baker. You need people like the, that, that are part of the organization that he's um, leading mm -hmm. that are willing to engage with us, that are willing to step out and say, we're going to take ownership of our neighborhoods and we're going to do it with the police officers. Without all of those those magic formulas coming together, you don't have mm -hmm. um, you don't have a vibrant community, and that's what we're trying to build here. Okay. Now, now earlier on the show, um, we had um, Marcus Dent from the Guardian Angels, um, who also spoke very highly of the two of you gentlemen and talked about the fact that you can't just do it in one district; it has to be done 
around the city because if you do it in one district and you run the crime somewhere it's going to move over to the next neighborhood how important is it for you all to have good relationships with other people throughout the city also I go anywhere I'm invited to speak mm -hmm. uh, when I worked with Eric he couldn't always go with me mm -hmm. he had to stay in the southern right uh, but I'll go in any neighborhood and start mm -hmm. we've gone as far as England to start our citizens on patrol okay and recently we had a French TV network here that filmed one of our walks mm -hmm. so we're and last week we had two people from Belize so the southern district is now becoming international sure and I work closely with the southwest and the southeast there are our sister districts okay and we try to spread what we're doing mm -hmm. amongst by attending each other's meetings and walking patrol if necessary. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you, don't you think that uh, with, there's so many great citizen on patrol groups out there in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talked about earlier about Northwest Citizen on Patrol. We mm -hmm. have uh, the Operation Pulse program that has a, a great relationship with Major Russell in, in, uh, in the Eastern District. And I know there are others throughout the city. You all have the Southern District. Don't you think it's important that we all now look at this from a, from a larger picture and, and look down and come together for the whole city and just do a big city citizen on patrol program? The, uh, the, the timing of your question is rather appropriate. Um, on Monday, I began my new role um, under the direction of the police commissioner to start coordinating um, community intelligence and communication amongst all of the neighborhood services units in the city. Every district is still going to maintain its own neighborhood services mm -hmm. unit and they're going to function the way that they are. Right. But we're going to take that macro approach to, to um, our neighborhood services units and find a way to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that we're all doing the same thing for, to accomplish that goal. Now, I, I was saying earlier that I had the privilege of meeting uh, the new police commissioner, uh, Commissioner Batts, on uh, last week. And I have to tell you that um, I was very impressed with, uh, with his ability to relate to people, but also his ideas and his focus on community and policing and, and having a, a professional police department that works great with the community. And I think that is so important. And you all have done nothing but just, you know, put the icing on top of the cake when it comes to that. So tell us about your new job. What, what will you be doing with your new job? Well, as you said, the commissioner is um, intent on, on building really strong relationships mm -hmm. with the community. He's been out to community meetings. He mm -hmm. continues to go to community meetings. The function that I've been tapped for is um, it's a coordination effort to make sure that the message from the commissioner out to all the communities sure. is the same across the board. And at the same time, the commissioner wants to get good information back, and not necessarily just crime information, but what's going on in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. what's going on in the communities, and there needs to be a conduit for that to flow to the commissioner's office. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a new role. We're, we're developing the framework, and um, we're going to meet next week with all the neighborhood services sergeants and, and start moving this process forward. But it's going to be an exciting thing for the I'm city. I'm sure it is. And, and Jack, you've already met with the commissioner yes. at one of your council, at your council meetings also? No, not a council meeting yet. He's okay. a little too busy for them yet. He's met with the presidents uh, of the council. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that tells you already that he's reaching out to the uh, to the presidents to get and develop exactly. a relationship also. Well, I see nothing but a bright future for our for our city when it comes to safety and and, and keeping our citizens safe. Um, I I always have to um, to commend our men and women of the Baltimore City Police Department. I think that we have. Uh, I know we have one of the best police departments in our city. Um, I know many people in the police department. My own little brother was a, was a Baltimore City police officer, but I'm, I'm very impressed with how our police officers take care of our citizens. Um, and there's a lot of stories that people don't even know on a daily of what our police officers do uh, to keep our city safe. Um, I wish you all much success in what you do. You success in, in what you're doing uh, in a, in a bigger way now. Jack, everybody knows that uh, knows about the famous Jack Baker. I mean, J Jack is well known yes, around Baltimore City through many police commissioners. Uh, Jack is the guy they would always call in um, to come in and talk about citizen on patrol, which is very important in our community. I want to congratulate you and thank you for what you do for our city. Uh, and anytime you guys want to come back together individually, bring some friends, and we we'll talk about what's going on in our city and how we can make our, sa our city safer. I invite you back. So if, is there a number you want to give out or a phone number where somebody can, can call uh, and talk to you about uh, 
their citizen on patrols? Um, email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. I can spell out my email address for you if you'd okay. like. It's, it's right. a lot of confusing letters. We'll that, put it at the bottom of okay. the screen, okay? That, right. that would probably be the best. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show again, and have a great holiday. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Sam. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. I want to thank all of my guests for coming on the show today and teaching us how we can be safer in our city. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.